for those who I haven't met yesterday, my name is Fernanda. I work for Zing, which is a private foundation that invests on technology and gives advice to charities on how to use um, technology in a better way. And they are the project sponsors for CVHR. And today I'm joined by Mike, who works at CompuCorp, and he's a project manager for CVHR. So <laughs> I'll just tell you a little bit about the story of how and why we started this project. Um, so a few years back, when Zing was working with their partner charities, um, it became obvious that a lot of them were struggling with HR and how they were, they were gathering HR data. And um, they found that the solutions that were available in the market, the off-the-shelf solutions, were either too expensive or it didn't do what the charities needed them to do, or both of these reasons. So they were really struggling to um, keep their HR data accessible and safe. So Zing decided to invest in a solution that would be um, affordable and comprehensive, but also sustainable. And they knew that many of these charities were using CVCRM or based on Drupal, so they started looking at how they could um, build this solution with open source. And what they did was they used the, the source code from CVCRM and they started slowly building CVHR on top of it. And this allowed us to really keep the cost low and not start completely from scratch, but start from a system that was already developed in many ways that could help us. So um, who's the team behind CVHR? Um, CompuCorp, which is a digital and design agency based in London and who specializes in open source solutions, are the project developers. Drishtant, which is a charity consultant based in Mumbai. Um, they help charities become more efficient through the use of technology. They help manage the project. And then we have Zing, which is funding the project. And CVHR is based on the technology of CVCRM and Drupal, as I just mentioned. And another big reason why we've been able to develop this project is because we've had help of different charities throughout the process who have been our pilot organizations and have really um, helped with the development of the project, testing it and telling us what kind of things they needed in order to make HR more efficient. Um, at the moment, we have four pilots. Some have come and gone um, over the years, but we have, I think, a good diversity of pilots because they're different sizes and based in different countries as well. So, for instance, Farm Africa, which um, is based in the UK, has more than 50 staff here, but they also have offices um, in four different countries in Africa. Um, Future First have 40 plus staff and they have different offices around England. Sneha is based in India and they have over 350 staff. And UK Youth have 85 plus staff and also three offices around the UK. Um, so why would a charity want to use CVHR? Um, according to an American research agency called Expert HR, there is an average of 1 to 66 HR managers to staff in the nonprofit um, sector. So a lot of charities struggle with perhaps not having a full-time HR person or having only one HR person for um, a number of staff members. And we found that many of these charities were using spreadsheets or paper to record data. And even for small organizations that have people on the go and are working remotely more and more these days, it becomes a struggle ac accessing this data if it's based somewhere in the office and if you can't um, like request leave or look, someone's, look up someone's contract when you're working from home, for instance. Um, the other reason why we think CVHR can be helpful for charities is that we see a lot of collaboration these days between the HR manager and line managers who have to gather data for their own um, staff that they monitor. So it's how is this data being standardized within the organization and how can it 
um, be useful to create reports, for instance, from the same data that you're seeing throughout the organization. Um, like I said, many charities have different offices, both in the same country and internationally. So if, for instance, which is the case for, with Farm Africa, they have their central office in the UK um, and four offices in Africa that gather their own HR data, but the UK office needs to create reports for this data. How do they do that? Um, they have to wait for spreadsheets at the end of the month. They can't easily go and just create a report every day. So this is, these are the types of issues that we're trying to address with CVHR. Um, we're really excited to have released version 1.6 in September and that's our MVP version and now we're looking to onboard new clients to try out CVHR and we'll go through the roadmap in more detail later. So I'll just explain the different types of users you can have with CVHR. So there are three, three security levels that we provide at the moment. The first one is um, the HR admin, so that's the person who, who will gather all the data, who sees everyone's contracts and pays, and um, they can really edit everything and have access to all this information. And then you have line managers who usually take care of a team and they approve the leave for a certain group of people. And then you also have staff members, which is everyone um, else in the organization who wouldn't have access to approving leave to other people. So I'm just going to show you the self-service portal now, which is what the manager and the staff have access to. Right. So here I'm logged in as a staff member and I'll just go through the different features that we offer on the self-service portal. So you'll start with um, the person's image, which they upload themselves. And then on the left-hand side, you have, under my details, you have information which has to do with their job contracts. So for instance, their role title and department and location, they can't change that information, only the HR manager can. But the information that's here on the right, they can easily edit that. So for instance, we give them the ability to change um, their address, um, change their image and contact information. And they can also change their emergency contact information as well, which they can store up to two at a time. And then we also have a task management um, feature, which is to do, it has to do with um, HR tasks. So for instance, if someone's joining an organization, um, then the HR manager will allocate different tasks for different people. And this is helpful because um, they don't have to physically go and chase the person. They'll just create a task. It will appear on your self-service portal. You can view any details for that task when you click on it. Um, so if they would have added any notes or um, attachments, you could view it here. And once you've completed that task, you can just mark complete. There shouldn't be an error. Um, <laughs> you would just mark complete and that would um, send a notification to the HR manager that you've completed that. You then, yes. How is this relating to sales app? Is, is it like all activity? On the in CVCM. In CVCM. Independent. It's independent. So sorry, I should have explained that um, CVHR is completely independent in terms of how it functions from CVCM. So people who are using it um, both would have different installations. They don't really. Um, the data doesn't go across the two systems, and the reason why is because HR data is legally very sensitive, and you shouldn't be. Um, yeah, mixing the data between HR and CVCRM. So they should have two contact data? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So they would also have their leave displayed here. So at the top is the leave entitlement that they would have for the year. And um, at the bottom is the balance, the remaining balance of leave that they have. So for instance, if we re request leave, so let's say annual leave, I'm going to request something for December, December 14 to 16. 
And at the moment, you can choose between um, an all day or a half day. So let's say a half day here and two full days of leave. And you can add any notes. So please leave request. And then once you submit that, um, your leave approver will receive a notification via email and it would also show up on their self-service portal instantly so that they can have a look at this leave request. Um, you wouldn't be able to request leave for a date that you already requested, so the system just um, catches on on those things and wouldn't allow you to request leave twice. And it also doesn't allow you at the moment to request leave in the past, so we hope that people will request leave um, before they go on leave. And if there are any issues with that, then the HR manager has full access to, um, from the admin side to input leave in the past if there are any uh, mistakes or if they didn't request it before. And then we also have toil, which um, people use different terms for this, but basically it means when you work overtime. So you start with a balance of zero toil. And when you work over time, you would request toil from your HR, um, your line manager. So you would say, for instance, I worked, so I worked um, two days and I think I should get one day toil. They would review this and have a look at whether this is correct. And they would then give you toil credit. So for instance, here you can see this person received toil credit and then they use the toil. So only when you have toil credit can you then use toil. So this was one of the feedbacks we gathered from the pilot organizations in how they do this um, overtime process. And then on a separate tab you have um, sickness. So people would report sickness in the past, so the opposite of requesting leave, because you usually become sick and then you come back and you let them know how many days you are away. If you need to attach any documents, this is how you would do it as well. So similarly to requesting leave, you would add the dates and you can add any notes as well. Um, I'll show you staff directory in a little bit. HR resources, so that's something that the HR manager can upload so that everyone has access to. So things like first aid booklet and the employee handbook, yes. Um, just going back to the um, holiday and leave, mm -hmm. does it cater for people who don't necessarily work five days a week, so if they're just three days a week, and then if somebody works like two weeks off, mm -hmm. it's only taking six days? Yeah, definitely. So Mike will go through the admin side and how you would add flexible working patterns when you add their job contracts in the system. Um, and then you also have vacancies, which is kind of our initial level of recruitment, of, of a recruitment module. Um, we're working a lot on recruitment for next year, but right now you can create a vacancy from the admin side and you can post it internally if you want to open that for your staff and this is how they would view any new vacancies. And I'll just show you this staff directory. Um, so you're able to see everyone who's on the system and who works with you and that's a good way for people to keep their information up to date so you can contact them in, in any um, emergency or any case and you can search through name or title or any of these um, filters as well. And I'll just show you um, the manager side quickly. So the manager side is very similar to the staff side. The only difference at the moment is that you have the ability to approve leave. So you can see um, Adam is the leave approver for Zoe and you can see here at the bottom this is the leave that I just requested, 14th to 16th of December. If you click on the calendar you can view the details so you can see I added this note here, please see my leave request. And then you can choose to either approve all of these days, um, select some of them and approve or reject all of them. So let's approve selected for instance. Right, so that has gone through now and um, Zoe will have received a notification letting her know that part, part, her leave was partly approved and um, we'll talk a little bit more about how we want to 
further develop this leave and absences feature so that it's more of a conversation between managers and staff. So I'll just pass it on to Mike who will show you the HR admin side of the of CVHR. So, Fernanda mentioned that we have different roles in this system and depending on the role that your user has, you can see, you can have access to different sections on the website. So, what you see right now is the admin side and you probably would recognize this menu which looks quite similar to a CVCRM menu because it's actually built on this one. Uh, we use contacts uh, from CVCRM to store employees' information here. And this is the contact screen. Um, it comes from CV, but it's, you can see it's majorly redesigned and repurposed particularly for HR system. Um, the tabs that you would have here, so you can see the contact summary, which in a couple of widgets give you some really basic information about this contact or uh, this simply in this case. So some personal information, uh, leave reports, some information about how many days were taken off as sickness. So yeah, pretty, pretty, much, pretty much it. Uh, contracts is the Contracts is a key uh, functionality, basically, of this screen. So you can see the current contract with lots of information coming here. There are no past contracts, but the, if there were past contracts, they would be listed in a separate tab. <coughs> What's quite important is that we have this revision functionality for contracts. What this means is that you can have multiple revisions of the same contract. So, for example, if the person gets a pay raise, let's say, I don't know, coming like this, you can make a new revision. Let's say it's get promoted from um, next year. Oops. Right, okay, so there is actually it, there is a similar revision. Okay, so this is another one important thing to mention that right now we support having like only one revision uh, for, uh, for the contract to be happening on the same day and there can be no overlapping contracts um, in current system. So let's create a new revision starting like from February. And the reason is promotion. And in any case, if you want to see all the revisions, you can see them from the full history tab. So you can see this contract already has three revisions. Separate from contracts, we have job roles. And uh, the reason for that is it happens quite often in charity organizations that under the same contract, a person performs more than one role. And uh, we support this. So this is allowed under this current system. You can have multiple roles uh, with the same um, contract. And the logic for that is the fact that the, the contract is supposed to be all the legal stuff and the role is kind of like actually what they do, which is not considered necessarily to be a legal part of the you know, kind of written contract. So all the terms are in the, are in the, in the actual contract and the roles are, are just for each do you want to show them? Yeah, that's that's a good question. So let me show you what actually which fields the contract consists of. So um, you can see we have different set of hours, and this is quite flexible. You can set up different uh, set of hours based on the location or stand uh, or our types like could be a part-time or full-time employees, so. If you, if you do, if you put in some hours, put in the part -time. if you select some hours. Yeah. 
So let's say it's something like this. So that assumes that because the, they're part-time, you can then work out, the, it'll work out the FTE for you as well? So you've got the actual hours, if, if, you, change, um, if you change the actual hours? Yeah. But consultants or contractors are never in So they're yeah. called uh, casual. Casual. And so then you just put in what they're doing? Yeah. <laughs> That's not a bad Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. Okay. Yeah, so you're not all the other fields. Okay. Yeah, so. That's it. As for the other fields, maybe to just to go briefly through them. So we have. The contracts can also be paid and unpaid. Um, like if it's paid, we can select different pay scale, uh, actual payment. Um, how it's being paid, like weekly or monthly. Um, you can provide leave entitlement information for this contract from here, some insurance information, pension, funding, so like this is all quite flexible. Uh, to speak more about it, leave entitlement. Um, and I'm going to talk more about this uh, in a couple of minutes because this functionality is uh, uh, like the old extension which is still quite limited and uh, we plan to release a completely new version of this one with my, which is going to be much more flexible than it is right now. But even now uh, with the current version you can provide, you can set up entitlement for each con contact uh, for different absence periods and this can also be different from the contract information. So the reason for that is, for example, if under contract you can take 20 days vacation, but you join the company in the middle of a year, your entitlement will be different from the contract entitlement. And uh, this is what you can do from this screen. So you don't need to change anything on contract information itself. And it's also going to show you some statistics about uh, how many days were taken as vacation or other types during the selected absence period. Can I just mention quickly? Sure. Um, so I showed you how the, the leave manager would approve or reject leave for different staff members. So what Mike just showed you is a way for the HR manager to go in and look at the leave that the person has been taking, how many days they have left, and also to um, input leave if they need to. So for instance, if you request leave and, you're, and your manager is away on holiday, you can ask the HR person to go in and approve or reject that leave and, and look at it for you. Thank you. Okay, so the documents uh, tab is also like quite important way to store all the documents related to the employee in one place. And uh, we also have quite a lot of things we want to change about how this works to make it more flexible and to support different versions of documents. So if one document is going to expire, it will go in to create a new one based on the expiry date that you set up for this document. And uh, it will, depending on how you set this up, it's going to notify the line manager or the other responsible person to make sure you have the new document in place in time when it's going, when it's, when it's, when it needs to happen. Should we explain what we mean by document? Like, yes. So like a document is, let's say, some of these or passports that you have to have. So there'll be certain, yeah, when you set up the document, there'll be certain documents that you have to have. Yeah, so this is all going to be set up from these screens. For example, let's say I have an employee called Zoe and she needs to have, she has a visa that is going to expire, let's say, I don't know, 
general ethics. So what this means is basically that uh, you set up due date as well. Let's say it's going to be somewhere in December 7th. And you assign this to Peter, who is going to be like the person responsible for getting the new document version in time. So you would upload the, new, the current document from here, but how exactly it's going to work is that uh, once the time comes for the new, for the current document to expire, Peter will be notified that it's going to be a new document created and he, he knows that he will have like one week or so, depending on what you set up, to get this new version in place. Um, one other th functionality which is worth mentioning here is the manager step, which comes from the relationships from CVCRM. And uh, this is also very flexible. So depending on what you set up here. So let's say you set up a leave approved by relationship type. What this means is that the person who has this relationship will be responsible for approving leave requests coming from this employee. So let's say Peter is a direct manager of Soy, and when I set up this relationship, all leave requests that Fernando was showing previously would Peter will be notified about them. He will see them on his on his SSP, on his self-service portal, and he will be able to uh, approve or reject them from here. Okay, any questions? Maybe? No. Um, so you were mentioning the, the teams and the roles. So. Yes. So manage teams and roles functionality is also quite important, especially for bigger organizations that have lots of uh, offices in different regions, and different locations. And uh, it happens that uh, usually they want managers from regional offices to have ac limited access just to employees from that office. And um, this is where you can basically set this up from. So. The list of regions and locations is customized from uh, administra from CV administration. So once you have this in place, let's say South London, I don't know, Victoria. Uh, basically, depending on what you set this up from. So as a general administrator, you, administrator, you can define which regions and which offices other administrators have access to. So again, this is quite important for some organizations who have uh, offices in different locations. So it basically simplifies the ACLs. So you, know, you could do all of that with ACLs if you wanted to, but you'd have to create your group, put somebody in the group, and then grant the permission to access that group. So in order to kind of simplify that, we just said, OK, well, generally in terms of HR, you know, there's going to be, let's say, two fields, region, location, that you want to kind of restrict access to. And so they can do, they can go in and they can say, right, this contact, which really should be a user, but let's say it's the contact for, you know, for simplicity, who can they see? Okay, well, they can see the people in this location, or they can see the people in this region. So if they don't have view all contacts, then that's all that they can get, which just simplifies the whole use of ACLs. Yeah, you can still use ACLs if you want to. We have 10 minutes. Ten minutes left, and plus ten minutes for questions. So let's just quickly go uh, through the rest of uh, functionality that I wanted to quickly show you. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, so this is like the task dashboard. Again, this is the admin side, uh, so admin has obviously much more permission than usual stuff. And this is the dashboard from where you can see all the tasks that are created in the current system. And uh, you can create new tasks from here. So there is like a concept of a target contact. Uh, the target contact is the contact, the employee who this task relates to. 
So let's say, for example, we need to schedule joining date for Zoe again, who is going to join on October 14th. Just put some details. And this is going to be assigned to Peter. Right, okay, so you can see this uh, task appear here, and uh, uh, Peter will also see this on uh, his SSP. I think this is Joy. This is okay. Um, So tasks are combined with documents because like uh, each document actually is also like, going to be a separate task of, to get the new version and so on. And uh, there are also different views of tasks. Uh, you can see them on a calendar view as well. Um, Right, yeah, so that's probably it about tasks. And uh, just to cover quickly the uh, report section. Reports actually is a very powerful tool and it's, uh, uh, it's something that you can get information about your employees in various ways really. And uh, it's, again, it's very just powerful to, to get various number, uh, type of data. So, uh, the reports are again accessible for admins, but this is quite flexible. Can provide access to some to manager role as well. Uh, right now, there are two major types of reports: reports related to people and reports related to some uh, leave and absence data. So, speaking of people, you can select the date which you want to have the data for, and uh, there are two ways to present this majorly, like in a way of uh, just a table with some data about the employees and uh, the pivot table. And pivot table is really a powerful tool to present to data, data and it's powerful in a way that you can customize the way it's presented. Um, I think we have some configuration saved already. So, for example, you can, well, the simplest one obviously is to present some uh, headcount for depending on the unique roles. And if you remember, I mentioned that one person can have multiple roles, so it's quite important to uh, remember that. Uh, but it's not only like in a way of table, you can present this. Uh, in a bar chart, for example. So this will be like gender and age. Yes. So if you also dropped, let's say, if we got like raw location, raw department, we got data we could have. Um, no, roll um, roll department. department. So, and if you put that maybe on the other yeah. axis or gender of the other axis. Put gender at the bottom. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So then you can kind of get, you know, like the gender split per uh, department. Two departments, yeah. Stuff like that, so. Can I show them a heat map? What are you going to use for the library? Uh, so this, this library is, there's, there's, there's no resource uh, mm. JavaScript library. I'll send you the link. Um, but we've used it for this and also for the activity reports that we saw in PubWatch and also the Google and the code student as well. So this is actually, that reports that yeah. are actually Developed on top of slightly different in terms of how we've done it, it's built on top of Drupal views. So you can change the fields that make up the report, the available fields, by creating a new view, adding views as a JSON output. And then so you can you can literally create you know, whatever report you want if you've got a bit of Drupal knowledge as well. Okay. Yeah, so um, as briefly just talk about some uh, plans for the future. So currently the release is Fernanda mentioned is the MVP version which was released in September. Um, we have the next release coming, which is planned for December this year. And uh, what's the most important about this one is going to have a completely new leave and absence feature. 
and uh, it's going to replace the current extension and it's going to have be much more flexible in uh, comparing to what we currently have so I'm going to show you just some couple, some couple of mockups of uh, this extension because it's still in development. So this is what it's going to look like for an admin. Uh, this is the list of uh, Lee requests that are in the system for now. You can also, as an admin, record new absences. There was actually a question about uh, having like custom work scheme, right? And uh, based on that how we're going to calculate the number of days that are taken off as a leave request. So here you can see that, for example, if you uh, report stuff leave <coughs> and uh, you take it from multiple days, you can see the current opening balance, which is 17 days in total, and you can see the, day, uh, the change, which is 2.5 days. And uh, basically this means that uh, according to this working scheme that person would have worked 2.5 days so it's this is how it's counted here um, so just to explain so the, the big changes for this module were like support for flexible working patterns so people who let's say work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday but don't Thursday and Friday so you know the, the system will automatically calculate if they take off two weeks um, it will say, well, actually, that's just six days of leave, as opposed to, you know, on, on the old system, obviously, there's nothing telling the system which days that person actually works. But also down to a, a more granular level, if people work, let's say, half day on Tuesday or three quarters of a day on Tuesday or leave early, you can actually say, well, that day only is three quarters of a day of leave. And let's say that, you know, Janet works from 8 a.m. till, um, you know, 7 p.m. on a Monday to make up for it, but you can say that that's one and a quarter days. So able to make it like quite fair in terms of the way that the system calculates the, the leave deductions. Um, plus also leave expiry, so leave can, you know, kind of so sort of toilet expiry, leave carry forward, leave calculations. Um, so, you know, the, this, the new leave and absence module will be um, equivalent to probably exceed most commercial, you know, leave and absence systems that you would go on. So we look to, you know, four or five commercial systems got all the features out of them and, and have found better solutions and ones that will actually work for, you know, small nonprofits but also multinational nonprofits that have lots of different legals for different locations as well because you can attribute lead types to different countries, for example. And also it will take into consideration like um, holidays that you input, so like public holidays or bank holidays, if that person works part-time and one of their days is Monday, and they're requesting leave, how does that affect um, the fact that there are bank holidays only on Mondays? Um, you can also record like lateness, so yeah. when people, what time people are arriving at the office. That was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is like how it's going to look for a new living absence on a, contract, on a contact page. So you can see we can see uh, the report uh, for this person in particular for the selected absence period. Uh, you can also see it in a calendar way. Uh, entitlements uh, for, the, for some particular uh, absence period and you can also edit them from there. The system here is calculating people's entitlement. So every period, which might be every year, but you might have short periods for whatever reason, people will have an entitlement, which might be, let's say, 20 days of leave, which might be 25 days of leave, whatever it is. But if that person, let's say, has a short contract, the system will calculate, oh, actually, they only get six, you know, six months' worth of that, it prorates it. If, for example, the, um, the work days in those months, and it does it like, based on the work days that are in that, that period. Um, so there's a lot of clever logic that goes in there. If they have two contracts that go into the period, it will calculate the appropriate amount of days across the two contracts and only let them kind of take holiday when the contract just going to show them I can say so. Lead is a big, complicated beast. Yeah, so and just to be clear, the work pattern can also be customized from here. So this is quite a big improvement to what we currently have. The work patterns can have an effective date so they can start on a particular day and therefore they might the future leave. Yeah, okay. And uh, 
so this is just some very brief, was very brief information about the leave and absences extension and uh, uh, the following release after leave and absences is going to do some major improvement to the recruitment process and vacancies extension that is currently available. So this is still like in the early stage of wireframes, uh, but you can see like some of major concepts here. So each vacancy is going to be like treated as a sequence of stages, and uh, this is uh, what the vacancy dashboard is going to look like. You can see the list of open vacancies. You can see the list of stages, and stages are going to be customized based on the vacancy. And you can see the number of candidates on each stage. Uh, Vacancies are going to be really much connected with general tasks flow and uh, here on this screen you can see the list of sequence of tasks uh, particularly connected with this vacancy. So basically who and when is supposed to do something to just to, to move forward with the recruitment process. There are different ways to present this, uh, like when the calendar for example. Uh, this, on this screen uh, you will see a separate vacancy with separate candidates and they are broken by separate stages. Uh, so this is a really great way of like visualizing like your recruitment pipeline, which is like how many people are in this lane and then move them to the next lane when you're kind of saying okay, we're going to go to the next lane and then move them on to the next lane when they're kind of past the second interview and so on. So you can kind of visualize, okay, well, we've got 100 candidates, 80 are at this one, you at this stage, you know, 10 are at this stage, five have been taken through. So it gives you a really good visualization of what's going on. Right, so very quickly, um, as part of the roadmap, a few things that we want to do with this new recruitment module is um, to have better candidate filtering, to integrate it with people's calendars, to really have a, a way for people to have discussions, so when they interview someone to give them comments and perhaps a rating as well. Um, and yeah, so that you can edit the candidate flow so you can say how many interviews or meetings you've had um, within each opening. Some other things that we're thinking about building for CVHR, but we haven't started working on that, um, on still, but are just things that people have given us feedback on. So things like being more mobile responsive, integrating it with, looking, we're looking at integrating it with Yoti, which is like a facial recognition app. Um, more on leave and absences and recruitment, interna internationalizing CVHR so that not only can you use it in different offices, but that it will take into account different HR practices internationally as well. Um, more on visa process management. Recording better, um, giving more options for recor recording training. So at the moment you can just record that someone did a training, but things like you would be able to put up a training and people can sign up for that training. You can say if it's required or if it's something um, they can choose to go on. Um, tracking different assets that people borrow from the organization. Disciplinary, um, having more features for the manager on their tab. So managers can only approve or reject leave, but other things like creating tasks and just really managing their team within their own self-service portal, organization charts and creating different roles and projects as well. And then I'll just end on a note that we're still under development, we're looking for new pilot organizations and this is a really good way for you to have your say on how you want the system to develop or even if you don't want to become a pilot at the moment it would be great to talk to you about what kind of features you think are missing or could improve um, from CVHR. And yeah, through collaboration is how we're going to make the project more sustainable and useful for charities around the world. And we'll take any questions for the next 10 minutes. 
<laughs> Anyone have any questions? No? Any comments about what you've seen? <laughs> I think it looks really impressive because it's a really powerful moment. But you can chat with my HR manager and they get back. Mm -hmm. And I know, how many staff do you have um, at the Green Party? About 40 to 50 staff. 40 to 50. Yeah. And does that change a lot like throughout the year? Yeah, I mean, obviously with like elections and things, we'll have <coughs> high activity, so mm -hmm. especially the general election year. Yeah. Yeah, um, one of our pilots was, the initial pilots was BC NDP, which is also a political party in Canada, and that was one of their scenarios as well, that come come election time, they'll have a large influx of new people and they need a system like CBHR to record these people, but also to make sure that it doesn't collapse when you have to record like 2,000 new people. So they've tested it out and I think they they liked um, the functions that we had. What do you use in that? Um, so we use Who's Off for kind of like lead planning, yeah. um, but in terms of like an HR system, we don't really have Yeah, that's the other thing we've seen quite a bit. A lot of people use, um, yeah, leave leave management software, or they'll use like recruitment software. And we wanted to provide the full scale so that you could do everything with CVHR without having to have two or three different softwares that don't talk to each other. So hopefully we'll get there. The leave management software can usually interact with the payroll. Yes. How about this? So we don't have payroll with CBHR. Um, I'm not sure if it's something that we're looking at. Jamie? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so payroll is kind of considered to be the last bit. Um, so once you've got everything else that you know it's all working, then we will kind of look at payroll. You can export out all the data that you have in CIVI. So you know, all the information about salaries, all the information about the and all of these kind of things. But actually having it calculate all the payroll and all the taxes and all of that stuff is complicated. Um, and so we will hopefully get there one day, but we haven't kind of attacked that yet. But just to integrate with the commonly used mm. payroll and accounting systems, I mean, presumably you know, we can generate a CSV export, but is there, is, there any, is there anything that could be done to automate that? So as people, mm. as HR change the salary rate, say, mm. within city HR, is, could there be an automatic feed to the payroll system? So I mean, you, we, anything could be done. Um, I think like, and I think that the um, the current features are that you can export that data out, you know, kind of manually. There would be nothing stopping the future development of either electronic integration or actually have CBHR to, to do those kind of things. The, the feedback that we had from the pilot clients has been that generally they have third party agency that deals with payroll or a separate payroll system. So that, that literally is part of their finance system. So you know we we didn't focus on that at the initial stage and we focused more on you know things like leave in absence and you know data reporting things like that. But you know certainly if we found a, a good example of a pilot who could show us well actually this is how a payroll needs to work in general and we could get enough you know knowledge around it in order to do something great then we could accelerate that as well. Definitely. Um, any other questions? The problem with payroll is that there is a lot of searching. It's really hard to keep up with. So, kind of clients. So, just having a piece of software on the software will help you. So, somebody managing the process. There's probably need different rules and different calculations for different countries as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it depends on the contract structure that they can do. Exactly. So, we were kind of like. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking that it's not. It wouldn't be important to, you know, develop a whole payroll system. It's more that as you make a change within the HR, you don't have to do a manual export. That that there can be some automatic updating. Mm -hmm. 
So the problem with that is that you could. Uh, the problem is that obviously it depends which system you want to integrate to. So every time you you know want to get some VHR to talk to this is this is why it's great to have some VHR and the one that's and it brings your recruitment and all of these other things into one place because you don't have to get lots of systems talking. But you know getting some VHR to electronically talk to something else is very possible it's based on CBCI so and Drupal as well people who know it and do integrate the systems all the time. Um, but we could have create a one size fits all that would talk to every payload. No, 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 but I mean, you just, you just attack the most commonly used ones. Okay, yeah. Something exactly to that. All right. Okay, so thank you very much um, for coming to our presentation. I'm happy to show you more about CVHR at the CompuCorp desk later. And just a few announcements. We have a 10 minute break now and then we're going to go into extension showcase and lightning talks before lunch today. So if you can come back here in 10 minutes, I think we'll kick off with that and then we'll have lunch straight after. All right. Thank you. Thank you.